I got a couple of uh, corny dad jokes for you. Uh, yeah, okay. Y'all ready? All right. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. I may have done this before. I don't know, but knock, knock. Boo. Don't cry. It'll be okay. <laughs> what do you call a deer with no eyes? I have no idea. All right, I got one more for you. There's a man who, who went to confession and he told his priest that he had been stealing supplies for years from the lumber company that he, had worked, that he worked with. And the priest asked, he said, well, what exactly did you take? The man said, well, enough to build my own home, enough to build my son a house and each of my two daughters a house and a vacation home at the lake. And the priest paused, and he said, this is very, very serious. I shall have to think of a big penance. He said, have you ever done a prayer retreat? And the man replied, no, Father, I haven't, but if you can get me the plans, I can get the lumber. (laughs) When we repent, we need to be sincere, don't we? We need to be sincere. Well, good morning, y'all. My name is Troy, in case you're new. Um, my wife and I, Sean, we, we're campus pastors here. I'm always delighted to be up in front of you. Um, I, th- I feel like I have a, I know I have a word today for, for you as individuals, but also for this house. Um, I believe that, I, I believe there's something stirring in the atmosphere, and I think many of you would agree. And I believe there's certain levels that God wants us take take us to, and I believe today, if you're open and ready, I believe God will mark you and I believe God will mark this church for another level. How many agrees with that? We're going to begin uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 20. If you guys want to go ahead and turn there. Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to read a story here about King Jehoshaphat. <clears throat> this is the New Living Translation. To begin with, the king had just gotten word that there was three armies vast armies headed his way to destroy him and his kingdom. Just to go ahead and set the, set the story for you. That's what's taking place. If we look in verse 3, it says, Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Verse 5 Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah in Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, God bless you. He didn't pray, God bless you, but. He said, oh Lord, God of our ancestors, you are alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler over all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. In verse 12, it says, Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking for you for help. Verse 21, After consoling the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single enemy escaped. So today I want to talk to to you just a little while about there's power in your praise. There's power in your praise. And I I debated about, originally I was going to name the title of the sermon, there's power in praise. But I I, I always try to be intentional. I want to make sure you know there's power in your praise. There's power in your praise this morning. I want you to get that in your spirit. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you again for today. I thank you for what you've already done. God, we just, we just set our hearts to you right now. We just look to you. I pray that you would help our ears and hearts to be open to receive what you have for us. And God, may we leave here changed. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Now, before I get into the message about praise, I want to take just a moment, just a moment and talk about our mouth and our words, okay? I know through the years we've heard messages about our mouths and what we're saying. Um, we all know that there's, that life and death are in the tongue. That's what the Bible says, right? In Proverbs 18, 24, the death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it eat its fruit. So my first question for you today is, what kind of fruit are you eating? What kind of fruit are you eating? Are you eating sweet fruit? Are you eating bitter fruit today? What's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of my mouth? I ain't talking about on Sundays when it's game day. I'm talking about what's coming out of your mouth on Tuesday and Thursday. What's coming out then? What's coming out of your mouth when all is well and your belly's full, all your bills are paid, and everybody loves you. Is thankfulness and gratitude coming out of your mouth, or, or do you have a sense of where you just, you know, you just lull asleep and you take it for granted? Or what about the times when you're robbing Peter to, play, to pay Paul when you're hungry and it seems like the world's against you? What's coming out of your mouth then? Are you finding a reason to, to be praised? Are you finding a reason to be thankful? Or are you taking that moment to be bitter and murmuring and complaining. I'm not saying it's, it's easy because it's not. But that's when we learn to give the sacrifice of praise that the Bible talks about. You see, we've got to be intentional with our words. We have to be intentional with our praise. We've got to do it to a point where it becomes like a spiritual muscle memory. I've used this before, but I, I used to play a lot of basketball. I used to coach basketball. And when I shot free throws, now I wish I had a goal in here to show you I could do it. But I, I've shot so many free throws in my life. And, and so I got the ball in my hand. And I've got the, the lines going across. And I've got the logo just right. And so I put my foot just in the right spot. And I look up at the goal. And this is, just imagine it with me, okay? It's going to go in. All right. So I take three dribbles. Yes, yes, it went in. Now, I, I tell you that because I don't shoot ball like I used to. Sometimes Noah and I are shooting the yard, but a couple of weeks ago, I was at some friend's house, and so we wanted to have a little contest about free throws. So I said, all right, let me, let me get going here, Mike. So I got it going. First time I hit seven for 10, seven for 10, and then one time I hit nine for 10. It was muscle memory. It was just, I've done it so much. It just, it just got to be where it's natural. That's the way our words, our praise has got to be. It's got to be a muscle memory. Whether it's something good or something bad going on, it's got to become a, a way of life. You follow me? Are you tracking with me this morning? You see, Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. But some of us, I, I got to give some of you, I'm going to give a little nugget right here for somebody, okay? And this is deep. You might want to get your cameras out or your pens take a picture of it but here's a deep nugget for you just because you think it don't mean you got to say it that'll preach won't it just because you think it don't mean you got to say it now some people it's like they wear a badge of honor they got a card and they're like man i'm just i'm just outspoken i'm just one of the ones that speak my mind and tell the truth sometimes you're just rude oh i'm sorry <laughs> That came right on out, Christian. Sometimes you're just rude. What are we saying with our mouth? Are we being hurtful? Are we giving life? Here's what the Message Bible says, Proverbs 21, 23. Watch your words and hold your tongue. You'll save yourself a lot of grief, not to mention hurting other people. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a time and place for some tough love and truth. But just be mindful of what you're, what's coming out of your mouth. Is everybody good? Okay, I think that I made my point about that, that there's, but there's going to be power in your praise. I want that to get in your spirit today. There's power in your praise. Now, the first thing I want to look at, I've got um, four major points I'm going to give you today. The first one is praise is not a suggestion, it's a command. I used to hear Pastor Parsons say this every service. He would come out as as large of a character as he is, and he would, he would say, praise the Lord, everybody. And he would say it again. He said, I said, praise the Lord, everybody. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. And the house would erupt with praise. And some people think, well, is it really that important? 
Yes, it is that important. In the book of Psalms, it's, it's recorded 34 times to praise the Lord. And back in the summer, Sean, uh, we went on vacation to Missouri, and we visited this church uh, called James River in Springfield. Great church. Loved it. Loved it. And when I say this, this is not comparing Rise to James. I'm not saying we should be the end. But when you go somewhere and you see something that you like, you, you want to do it, don't you? Well, one thing that we noticed was during the countdown, when it got down to one minute, people were already standing up. They were already clapping. Some of them were already shouting. They were, they were ready. They were ready to praise the Lord because I think they recognized that there's power in their praise. And so I would love for, look, I know sometimes we run late, but man, let's, when we get here in this house on Sunday mornings, let's be ready to praise the Lord. We don't know who's coming in here. We don't know what their week's been like. We don't know if they've lost all hope. But we need to show them what, it's, what it means to, to, to give the sacrifice of praise. Amen? Here's what Psalms 148.13 says. It says, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And to start with, it says, let them praise. If you go back and read the first 12 verses, basically it's saying, let all of creation praise the Lord. He confirms it in Psalm 150, verse 6. He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So what's some different ways we can praise the Lord this morning? Let's go through these real quick. The first one is shouting. Shouting, yeah. Psalms 100, verse 1 says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. That don't mean say, oh, Lord, help me today. That's, somebody said that's me. Bless it. Bless, oh, Mondays, okay. There's power in your praise, brother. Shout to the Lord. A joyful shout. I love it when we're in here and I hear Elder Davis uh, over here saying, hallelujah. It's, it's coming from somewhere. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'll be over here and I'll just holler, Jesus! I mean, it's just, it's just coming from somewhere, man. It's just a joyful shout. What's another way? We praise the Lord with singing. Psalms 105 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Psalms 149 says it this way, it says, Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Sing his praise in the assembly of the faithful. And then if you go to verse 5, here's what it says. Let them sing for joy as they lie in their beds. So we need to be singing all the time. Some of you may not want to sing as loud. No condemnation. It says make a joyful noise. But sing. Develop a song in your heart. Develop praise in your heart. It makes a difference. You see, it's great when we come in here on Sundays and everybody's expectations up and your excitement's up and we're praising God and we're, and we're getting after it. But what are you singing throughout the week? Are you singing praises to God during the week or are you singing bloom, despair, and agony on me? Oh. What are you singing? Y'all younger folks, y'all don't know nothing about that. But we need to be singing to God all the time. We need to be praising God in the shower. We need to be praising God on our way to that job, on the way to that school. We need to be praising God when it's, things are going great and singing praises when it's not. We need to sing praises to God on the mountaintop and praises in the valley. Praise should be a lifestyle all the time we should be praising the lord at all times there's a song i think i've used it before there's songs that comes up in my heart sometimes it says in the good times praise his name in the bad times i'll do the same in everything give the king of kings all the praise Man, dude, get going on that. Give me some of that. It takes that to get over that stinking news, don't it? That Jen talked about. 
Psalms 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. There's power in your praise this morning. Amen. What's another way? Lifting our hands. We lift our hands in praise and worship. Psalms 134, 2 says, lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Now, I know some of you may not be as comfortable raising your hands. You may not be used to doing different praises in church, but well, let's just watch a video on some, some instruction. And I know that each church has its own worship style, you know, which is cool. Some people are more expressive in worship, some people more subtle, and it's all good. Um, I go to a church that's pretty expressive in worship. It's, um, it's a hand-raising church. That's what it is, right? That's what, you know. Anybody here go to a hand-raising church? Anybody here? Sweet. Who here does not go to a hand-raising church? <laughs> Some of you are trying. You're like, I can't. I want to. I need to get some momentum. <laughs> totally cool. But hey, if you're not used to going to a hand-raising church, you want to go and join us, feel free to join us, but don't feel like you've got to join right in, okay? Start slow. We've got a lot of different hand-raises that we use. We actually have names for our hand-raises. So I'm going to walk you through real quick, okay, what they are, just to let you know. Say you're at my church, music is rocking, start slow, hands in the pockets, little elbow flap, you're fine. Very subtle. Get warmed up. Get your heart rate up. When you're warmed up, start with the first one. Ready? Carry the TV. Carry the TV. That's our first one. Very subtle. Go to big screen. Big screen, a little wider. Next one's my fish was this big. My fish was this big. If you're a liar, you can go out there. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Jesus loves you. Grace. Next one's hold my baby. Hold my baby. Got dueling light bulbs. That's our next one, dueling light bulbs. We got goalpost. Everybody knows goalpost. Throwing a heartburn. A lot of people like to do heartburn. Double heartburn, right back to goalpost. What's my favorite? Mufasa. Mufasa, that's my favorite. The circle of life. Tim, can you go higher? Yes, you can. You can take one hand, go a bunch of different stuff. Pointer, hatchet, schoolroom. <laughs> Release the doves, give the Lord a high five. Press it out. A lot of women like to wash the window. Wash the window. <laughs> and when you're comfortable there, go for the big three. Village people, Rocky, touchdown. There you go. There's your big three. You're set. <laughs> you're a pro. I couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> but that's a good way to praise the Lord by lifting our hands. Another one's clapping. We've already done that. We, we've already been clapping this morning. Another one is kneeling. You know, there's many times people come down and kneel at the altar. It's a way of praise and worship. Some people bow. They'll bow before the Lord. Now, I hadn't seen this one in the Bible, but some people run. My dad was a runner. <laughs> My dad played the guitar, and, I can, and I, there's people in here that can testify to this. My dad, I, I can remember seeing him on, on the chair. He's out there playing that little guitar, and all of a sudden, I've seen him sometimes. He'll just, he'll just get up and start holding that guitar. But I've seen him a couple times. He'll, he'll set that guitar down, and, y'all, he would jump off the stage and take off running around church. Now, I'm not a runner. If you see me running, something's chasing me, and I need your help. Another way is dancing, dancing before the Lord. I've seen all kinds of people dance. I was hoping Andy was going to be here this morning. Y'all know Andy sits over here in front. He's, he's jumping just as high as he can. Now, I can't do that, but praise God every how you're comfortable. Dance how you're comfortable. I mean, I'm, I, don't, I don't see much of the robots going on, but, you know, I mean, I've seen people, you know, just start getting it, and I've seen the crawfish. I seen one lady one time, she was dancing, and her, her hair piece fell off. She picks it up and just goes right back to dancing some more. So dancing before the Lord. And musical instruments. Y'all know this, Psalms 153 says, Praise Him 
with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the lute and the harp. And there's plenty of verses that talk about that. But my point is there is power in your praise. There's power in your praise. You see, we should express our adoration, our approval, and our gratitude as a celebration to the one who created us and to the one who redeemed us. Psalms 147.5 says, How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. You see, his thoughts are not my thoughts. They're higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. We serve a big God today, and there's power in your praise. And I just took a moment. I just wrote down some, some different verses. So just bear with me. As I read these, if you feel like shouting, if something comes to hold you, go ahead and let it rip. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. There's power in your praise this morning. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory above all the earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. I will praise you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell all the marvelous things you have done. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. In you will I trust. God, you are my shield and the horn of my salvation. You are my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. There is power in your praise this morning. There's power in your praise. You know, and sometimes you just, like I did earlier, sometimes you just got to have a song just to rise up on the inside of you. And I don't do this to entertain you, but I, I'm going to sing a song to you right now that I do, and I want you to, as you feel, come on, I want you to join in with me. All right? It, don't, no judgment on here. Don't, don't judge me, okay? I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. All right, one more time. Sing it to him this time. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. You're so good, God. To worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Praise is not a suggestion. <laughs> praise is not a suggestion, it's a command. And there's power in your praise power in your praise you guys did awesome as we begin to transition i want to go back to that story that i read to you first thing and i want to get three little truths out of this we go back to second chronicles chapter 20 
And remember why I told you that there was three armies that were coming against King Jehoshaphat and the people. And remember, he, it says that he was terrified by this news, and he begged the Lord for guidance. How many, is there anybody here today that you're terrified about some news you've been given? Maybe there's some circumstances you're facing and you feel terrified and you've been begging the Lord for, for guidance. It says he ordered everyone to begin fasting. What a great idea. Fasting is a powerful tool, a powerful tool to you. I encourage you, if you've ever got a major decision in your life, fast. Seek God. He'll give you the answer. And remember, Jehoshaphat stood before the people as he began to, to pray. So in point number two, the first one is, remember, praise is not a suggestion, it's a command. Here's point two. Praise sets the tone. It releases faith into the atmosphere. Your praise sets the tone in your circumstances. Here's, here's what he said in verse six. He says, I pray, O Lord, God of, of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. You see, we just read how he said he was terrified and he begged the Lord for guidance. He knew how serious the situation looked, but yet he began by praising the Lord. He began by praising God. And I believe it gets God's attention. You know, I know y'all probably get tired of me using Andy Griffith, but I love Andy Griffith. There's times when Andy or maybe Barney's girlfriend starts to say good things about Barney. And if y'all have watched the, the show, Barney, he'll, he'll get that look about him like, you know, like yeah, he'll, he'll straighten his tie up and he'll, he'll get his pants right, you know. And sometimes they start patting that side on him. You start praising God, and I just see God doing something like that. I see him just standing up and fixing his tie and adjusting his belt and patting his side on for you. See, it just moves the heart of God when you begin to praise him like that. It sets the tone. It creates faith in the atmosphere. And it goes on right here. And, and let me say this. How many of us, things are coming at us, and we keep praising the circumstances? We keep finding fear and anxiety and praise and those things. No, in these moments, we need to gather up all the times God has come through, all the times he's answered prayer and before and begin to offer up our praise because there's power in your praise today. So praise is not a suggestion, it's a command. Praise sets the tone and releases faith in the atmosphere. Point three, praise helps us refocus. It takes our mind off of ourselves. It takes our mind off of our circumstances. You see, in verse 12, he said, Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking for you for help. See, praise can do that. Praise can do that. It takes your mind off of yourself. You begin to praise and begin to sing and begin to shout. You'll forget about yourself. You'll start thinking about him and how big he is. He's a big God. He's strong and powerful and mighty. So it takes our minds off ourselves. It helps us refocus. There's power in your praise. I'm, I've been praying and I'm believing that the Holy Spirit is going to make a deposit in your heart today about your praise, the power of your praise. I'm not talking about the, the power to praise the person sitting next to you. I'm not talking about the power of praise of your spouse. I'm not talking about the, the, the praise of your parents or the worship team. I'm talking about your praise and your praise and your praise. The power of your praise makes a difference today. I want it, my heart, my heart is that it will bypass all your fears, all your anxieties, all your depression, all your shame, all your guilt. I want to bypass all of that and get down in your spirit that there's power in your praise this morning. So let's keep reading what happens. In verse 13, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the guys that Jehoshaphat had there with him. In verse 15, it says, and this is what the young man said. He said, listen to all the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. 
Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. O people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low. Isn't that one of the worship? Isn't that one of the things we saw earlier, bowing low? It says he bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same. There's just something about lying before the Lord like that, praising him, worshiping him. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. So we've got praise is not a suggestion, it's a command, right? Praise sets the atmosphere, it, release, it releases faith in the atmosphere, it sets the tone, it helps us refocus, gets our minds off ourselves. And the last one is praise is a weapon, so use it. Praise is a weapon, so use it. Why are you using that? I'm going to drink. Early the next morning, King Jehoshaphat got up and he reminded the people. It's all in there. You can read it. He reminded the people about the word of the Lord and that they would be okay as long as they trusted in him. And verse 21 says, after consoling the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army. Remember reading that? Singing to the Lord. And praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. He is faithful. His love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon and Noah and Mount Seir to start fighting against themselves. And we read it. They got confused, didn't they? It says the armies, they turned against one another. They turned against Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After that, they had destroyed the army of Seir. They began attacking one another. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. And if you go on to read, it took three full days for them to gather all the spoils from the armies. Isn't that just like God? He does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. What's the verse says? The power of the wicked laid up for the righteous. I mean, God is so good, and he does good. Your praise is a weapon, so use it. So use it. I'm going to do something out of the ordinary right here. I want to ask anybody that's on the praise and worship team, whether you're a singer or a musician, I want to ask you to come down here. Come on. Come on down here right now. That, that's, that's, I, I'm, I'm finishing up my sermon right now, but I know this is a little a little odd but hey I'm a, I'm a little odd Jesus done things odd and look even if you're on a Wednesday night I'm, I'm not talking about today if you're on a, any schedule at all when it comes to praise and worship come down here maybe even Rise Youth if you're on the Rise Youth worship come on down here and I don't know if Rise Kids have any, have any but any musicians any singers come down here we got we, we're good on time I won't sometimes when I'm preparing a message just like I, I'll get a I, it's like I'll see something that I, that I need to do. And if it keeps coming back to me, I do it, no matter how crazy it sounds. And I just learned to trust that, okay? But this does not represent everybody on this team, but you guys are going to be representing everybody on our team. Everybody at this church, Wilson, Nashville, anybody on the praise and worship team, I want you to know that what you do is important. Do you guys love these Love, love this team. And we just, we just read how, how much praise matters. And see, we don't see when these guys come on Thursdays, Thursday nights of practice. We don't see them coming here on, early on Sundays and, and, and practice. And we don't see them uh, running yellow lights. I said yellow lights. <laughs> Some of them might be pink. I don't know. But when they're trying to get here on Wednesdays, we don't see all of that. All we see is the, the finished product. But I want you to know that what you do matters. It makes a difference. And what you're doing is you're setting the tone. You're setting the tone for this house. And I just want to, I want us to pray over you and release a greater anointing over you. If you don't take it 
as serious maybe as you should, my prayer is from this day forward that you take it to another level. I pray that you just wouldn't play anymore, but you would begin to play. I pray that you wouldn't sing anymore, that you, but that you would, that you would sing. I pray that your intimacy would increase with him because what you're doing matters. So I want to ask any elders or any deacons or any prayer team, I want you guys to come down and help us pray. Y'all come on. I know there's got to be some, some down here. I seen some of you down here earlier. Come on down here. I want you to know that a lot of times when I hear new people come to this church, uh, they always somebody's always going to mention they love the music. And they're not just saying the music. They love the atmosphere that we are doing, that we're providing. So what you're doing makes all the difference. So you guys don't get this opportunity that often because usually you're leading us. But what we're going to do is we've got a song ready to play. And I just want you guys to be, we're going to pray over you. You guys can stand to your feet. Y'all can stretch your hands and pray over them. You can worship. But we're just going to take a few minutes before we move on and do this. So y'all help me pray for these guys right now.